अच्छा सिखाओ सियासा नीलू का मैं छप में बेटू मो नहीं हो ना की तू आप हो मो नहीं हो बाकी जमायो के रूनी बाहर ही बना इमानिया जाकर के ना शुल्ले फुट थ्री डेज़ सासा नहीं पता ले लो ये जूसी तो तू मेरा फेक एंड ब्रेक टू टीम्स स्टेल्थ इन कार्जन इन एंड आउट इन अंडर ट्वेंटी मिनट्स ओके नहीं पुई Hupata kumpenda mtu kama sikiza chuni kwenye simu yako bonyeza star 812 star 501 hash Mapenzi si kumpenda mtu kwa kuwa amekamilika kwani nawe pia una mapungufu yako kwa hivyo mapenzi ni kumpenda mtu na mapungufu yake kupata kumpenda mtu onyeza star 812 star 501 hash star 812 star 501 hash From wherever you're watching us in Kenya and around the world, this is the Legends Edition coming to you live from Nairobi, Kenya, the capital city in here in East Africa. My name is Edmund Budibo. Top in this bulletin. We have chairman of committees who are not members of the executive attempting to answer questions in parliament. It completely doesn't make sense. And they have no way of knowing what the executive is doing because they are not members of the executive. Kenya Kwanzaa legislative agenda. President William Ruto wants an amendment of parliament standing orders to allow question time for cabinet secretaries. Raila at 78. ODM leader celebrates his birthday as a cross-section of leaders wish him long life. And narrow escape. Two Kiambu members of county assembly cheat death after surviving separate road accidents. Our sign language interpreter is Lucy Maura. Remember, you can get in touch with us, keep it social, using the handle and hashtag Legends Edition. My Twitter handle is Ed Mudibo. President William Ruto says the amendment of standing orders to allow cabinet secretaries to field questions from members of parliament in plenary will introduce order in executing the government's agenda. The president, who spoke on the third and last day of the cabinet retreat, further called for a ceasefire between the National Assembly and the Senate that has seen the Senate go to court for a record five times, seeking constitutional interpretation on its roles. Day three of the retreat at the Mount Kenya Safari Club in Nanyuki, Lake Ipia County, brought together the executive arm of government, the legislature, and the Council of Governors. President William Ruto emphasizing the need for stronger collaboration with Parliament and the devolved units. Parliament has formally begun the process of amending its standing orders to allow Cabinet Secretaries to appear before Parliament in plenary to answer questions by members. The past dispensation, the President says, has been disorderly. Whatever is going on now is simply uh, not right. You know, we have chairman of committees who are not members of the executive attempting to answer questions in parliament. 
It completely doesn't make sense. And they have no way of knowing what the executive is doing because they are not members of the executive. You know, they are members of the legislature. So when a member of parliament who is a chairman of a committee stands before parliament and tries to answer a question, it is ridiculous. In the proposed amendments, both the National Assembly and Senate chambers will designate a spot where the cabinet secretaries will sit and answer questions. Parliament has proposed Wednesday or Thursday afternoon for the sessions. The Speaker may also permit a member who raised a question to ask a maximum of two supplementary questions that relate to the original question. Therefore, cabinet secretaries must be ready uh, that you not just come to, with a written statement to uh, answer to what was asked. Be prepared that uh, uh, there will be supplementary questions. Prime Cabinet Secretary Musale Mudavadi will not only be managing the relations between the executive and the legislature, but will also be answering questions considered cross-cutting, accompanied by the relevant cabinet secretary. Now you have an office of the Prime Cabinet Secretary whose responsibility will be largely the relationship between the executive and the legislature. All the questions will be processed through his office. There are issues that will be cross-cutting. There is a question that could be asked, uh, for instance, that question on GMO that would touch on health, that would touch on trade, that would touch on agriculture, and we expect that such cross-cutting questions will be answered by the Prime Cabinet Secretary, and it is expected that, of course, you'll be accompanied by the Cabinet Secretaries in charge of the dockets uh, that the questions relate to, or officers in their respective dockets. While the CSS will appear before any house separately, there is also provision to face a joint committee of both houses if the matter in question is of national interest. We, we, we can disagree on things of legislation and say this and that, uh, that cannot be originated at the Senate. When it comes to oversight, the Senate enjoys equal standing with the National Assembly. And you'll be expected to appear before both houses and answer. The same answer that you present before the Assembly it's equally important that you appear before the Senate and give uh, the same. The head of state calling on both houses to put to an end the rivalry that has existed for the past 10 years, leading to the Senate moving to court. I want to uh, undertake here that I will not allow any matters between the two houses or between the two levels of government to go to court. We will find the framework to make sure that we sort all the issues out so that we do not have to expend public resources with lawyers going to court. President Ruto has also warned against litigations between government agencies, saying respective managers will bear legal costs. Any government agency that decides to take another government agency to court, whoever are responsible for the court matters, they will pay using their own money. I will not accept government resources to be used to pay lawyers for one government agency to take another government agency to court. The President and the Council of Governors pledging to work together to implement government programs. We are going to respect what the Constitution expects of us and what the law expects of us. As I have undertaken, we're going to have a retreat with uh, our governors so that we can agree in the first summit and we can agree as the two levels of government on how we are going to support uh, government programs, government projects, government initiatives at both the county and the national level. At the center of the constitution of Kenya is a devolved system of government. We will achieve faster development when the government at the county level and the national level work together. It is now full swing mode for cabinet secretaries serving under President William Ruto, with parliament expected to amend its standing orders to allow cabinet secretaries appear on plenary before the Senate and the National Assembly to be accountable to the people of Kenya through the elected representatives. John Jacob Curia, Legends Edition.
Deputy President Rigathi Gashagwa has called on Kenyans to supplement government efforts of greening Kenya to reverse the effects of climate change. The Deputy President, who has been on a routine hike on the slopes of Mount Kenya on the sidelines of the Cabinet Retreat, asserted that the Kenya Kwanzaa Administration is keen on restoring water catchment areas. <laughs> Early morning, the country's number two takes a hike to the iconic slopes of Mount Kenya on an exploration tour as well as pre. A refreshing tour that takes Rigadi Gashagua on a reflective mood, particularly on the status of Kenya's tree cover. <laughs> With four successive failed rain seasons and predicted suppressed rainfall in a fifth rainy season, having left more than 4.3 million people in danger of starvation, the Deputy President has called on Kenyans to supplement government efforts in greening Kenya so as to reverse the effects of climate change. President William Ruto has left a program to plant 15 billion trees by the year 2030. I want to appeal to all Kenyans every day, wherever they are, to make sure they plant a tree in every public function. We have asked our cabinet secretaries, our principal secretaries, our administrators, and all leaders, wherever they are in a public function, to plant trees so that we can preserve our water catchment areas like this one. Gashago says the government is also keen on the restoration of water catchment areas facing the risk of human invasion. This was a river before the effects of climate change that was always full. You can see it is down. I want to take this opportunity from the middle of Rick River on the slopes of Mount Kenya to tell the people of Kenya, even as we pray to God to intercede, we must play our part as human beings and as Kenyans to combat the effects of climate change. I want to appeal to our people that we must double our efforts in preservation of water catchment areas. The ongoing drought has affected more than half of the counties in the country. John Jacob Curia, Legends Edition. Leaders and Kenyans have continued to wish Azimula Omoja leader Raila Odinga a long and happy life as it turned 78 years on Saturday. Former President Uhuru Kenyatta in his message termed Odinga as his brother and friend, wishing him favor and blessings. The leader Ray Laudinga celebrated his 78th birthday on Saturday. Kenyans and other leaders took to social media to wish Odinga a happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Baba. Karibu sana. Former President Uhuru Kenyatta is among those who wished Odinga a happy birthday, terming him a friend and brother. NAC Kenya leader Martha Karua, who was also the Azimio Lomoja running mate and the just concluded general election, termed Odinga as Kenya's foremost transformational leader. In his message, former Mombasa Governor Ali Hassan Joho wished Odinga good health and happiness, while Suna East Member of Parliament Junet Mohamed said Kenya was lucky to have a man of fortitude who never gives up. Nairobi Member of Parliament Esther Pasaris termed Odinga one of Africa's great political leaders. Millicent Omanga also shared her birthday message with Raila Odinga. Kanu Chairman Gideon Moy on his part described Odinga as a gentleman revered for his convictions, courage and determination in his political journey, yet calm. Odinga, who is in Mombasa, was serenaded by ODM delegates. This coming as the newly established Office of Grand Mufti of Kenya has called on Odinga to stop politics and let the current administration tackle issues affecting the country, such as the high cost of living. Niwaombe sana viongozi wa kisiasa wa upinzani. Niwaombe mumpeni nafasi stahili mwishimiwa rais na serikali yake. Wapate kuwafanyia wa Kenya 
ambayo kwamba wamewaahidi kuyafanyia na ambayo wa Kenya wanatarajiwa kufanyiwa na wao. Ah uh, ulipaji wa ushuru muhimu katika nchi hakuna nchi ambayo inaendelea bila ya kulipa ushuru. Lakini himizo letu ni kwamba ushuru unaulipwa kupendelea uwe utatumika katika yale ambayo yamekusudiwa. Siasa kweli hazijakatazwa lakini zaidi ni matendo tuone ya kwamba mwananchi amepata yale ambayo anahitaji katika nchi yake. Nancy Kware Legends Edition. Well it's time now for a very first break but don't go too far because we've got plenty more coming for you on the other side of the break. Chiza loto, shinda pesa moto Wachua mamili leo na loto moto Chezo kianzia na shilingi hamsini Na ushinde milioni mbili kila siku Kucheza ni rahisi zaidi Kwenye M-Pesa, chakua lipa na M-Pesa Paybill number, weka 75-70-70 Account number, andika neno loto Kisha, weka star Alafu nambari yako ya simu kwenye amount weka kiwango chochote cha pesa kuanzia shilingi hamsini hadi shilingi elfu mbili lipa na usubiri draw makinika papa hapa ili utimize ndoto zako na loto moto cheza kwa kuwajibika mchezo huu ni wazi kwa watu walio na umri wa miaka 18 na zaidi ujumbe huu umeidhinishwa na BCLB cheza loto moto shinda pesa moto moto Maisha ni mafupi. Hivyo si vyema kumaliza muda mwingi katika malumbano. Hesabu baraka zako, wathamini rafiki zako na tabasamu ili udumishe amani. Kupata maisha bonyeza star 811 star 816 hash. Star 811 star 816 hash. Jumapili hii kwenye runinga ya KBC ungana naye askofu Michael Wanderi wa kanisa la Christian Foundation Fellowship Kiambu kuanzia saa moja hadi saa mbili asubuhi. Ningetaka nikwambie our Jehovah God because the Bible says he is the same yesterday, today and forevermore. He is able to take you to a place of abundance. He is able to take you to Rehobothi in the name of Jesus Christ. Kipindi ni neno la neema. Ukiletewa naye askofu Michael Wanderi wa kanisa la Christian Foundation Fellowship Kiambu usikose The question is what will you be watching every Sunday at 7:30 p.m. The second chance game show Correct answer Pension <laughs> That's right manake each and every Sunday saa moja unusu tutakuwa tunakuja moja kwa moja kwenye runinga yako only on KBC Channel 1 with the hottest and most entertaining game show this side of the Sahara. It's only on the Second Chance Game Show where you can watch people beat the buzzer. We were neighbors once and we grew up like sisters. You can say that we were friends before we were even born. If you want to remain my friend, you must be confident, believe in yourself. Just relax. Later on, both of our families went through many ups and downs. As long as you two are together, you can forget about my manners. Help. Hey. Dear. Yeah. Don't. Our lives turned out differently from how we imagined they would. <laughs> This guy came out of nowhere and sat down with me. And not only that, he's handsome. The guy sitting with you is Harvey, bud. Excuse me? That's Harvey sitting with you.
Do you have a new story to share with KBC? Get in touch swiftly on email news at kbc.co.ke or call 0723-892-654 or 0734-780-124. Welcome back. Police in Riru, Kiambu County, have begun investigations into claims by a member of the Kiambu County Assembly, Kongo Smart, that his car was hit from behind by a vehicle which was trailing him. The Kiamwangi Ward representative now says his life is in danger following the incident. Elsewhere, Larry Kirenga MCA, Joseph Kinyanjui, and his driver escaped death by a whisker when his car collided with another at Rukuma area in Lari constituency in Kiambu County along the busy Nairobi Nakuru Highway. According to Kungu Smart, who represents the Kiamwangi ward in Gatundu South, he was driving back home after attending his father-in-law's burial in Molo, Nakuru County, when his car was hit from behind by another vehicle in Membli area. Kutoka roundabout ya Kaa West, hapo nilikuwa ni memuwana na nilizuguka maramoja hapo, nione kama labda ata nipita, wakati nimepiga yo bump, Hapo sasa diyo alikuja haka nigoga nyuma na haka ya gari kaeda huko ikagia kwa mtaro. The Kiambu member of county assembly who now says he fears for his life added that he was rescued by friends from being beaten by occupants of the other vehicle. Eh, mimi mwenye na hofia maisha yagu. Uh, manake sijui hawa uh, watu walikuwa na nia gani. Kama ingekuwa ni accident, uh, a normal accident, kawaida ma driver ukae chini na wanazungumza na wanaongea lakini huwezi kakuwa uh, mwenye kugonga mwingine nyuma yeye ndiye hataki kusikiza, yeye ndiye hataki kuongea na kisha ameingia ame kwa gari nyingine na akatoroshwa. The MCA has since reported the matter to Riru Police Station. In almost another accident still in Kiambu County, Larry Kirenga, member of County Assembly, Josephat Kinyanjui, and his driver escaped death narrowly when his car collided with another one in Rukuma area in Larry along the busy Nairobi Nakuru Highway. <laughs> Driving school, wache haraka. Kama hiyo mtu anasoma mwezi moja ama anachukua gari mara mbili na anapewa rises. Tuache haraka jameni. Four people were rushed to AIC Kijabe Hospital with serious injuries following the accident that also involved a boda boda operator. The wreckage of the two vehicles and the motorcycle were towed to Larry Police Station as police embark on investigations. Families, friends, former colleagues and well wishes of the late veteran broadcaster Catherine Kasavuli gathered at United Kenya Club in Nairobi on Saturday evening for a fundraiser to offset medical bills and cater for funeral expenses. Last year, after a battle with cancer, a church service to celebrate her life will be held on Thursday the 12th of January at Friends International Church along Gong Road from 11 a.m. Kasafuli will be laid to rest next Saturday, the 14th of January, at her family home in Vihiga County. I remember the mother first and foremost and then I remember the friendship because uh, not only did I lose a mother I also lost my best friend many times she sacrificed so much for me so I'll remember that part and, and I say I came into this world being held by my mother she left as I held her and I thank her for everything our one and only president and commander-in-chief has dispatched Kenya shillings, one million shillings in support of the programs ahead for our late sister Catherine Kasavuli. Apart from that, our head of state has also committed to clear 
the entire outstanding bill in the hospital. Celebrate her life very well lived. And I'm sure most of you are older. During the time Catherine was on the screen, whichever station she was, you'll turn that channel to listen to her. Catherine was very professional. She loved her job. I would say she had found her calling. She had found the purpose for which God had created her. Catherine was a very consummate uh, person, just a beautiful face on TV, a lovely smile. And uh, to the family, I just want to say, Paul, for this terrible loss for you. Uh, and to just assure you that uh, we are going to walk this journey together. Uh, it is a very difficult thing to lose a loved one, and we know what you're going through. Catherine was one humble lady. You know, when you see her on screen, and then you meet her in person, you're wondering, uh, is this the same person? When she was on screen, you, you could only wait to see a bulletin being well presented. And to help the family cover the last expenses, kindly send your contribution to MPESA pay bill number 8089700. MPESA pay bill number 8089700. The account number is Catherine Casavulli. And to help the family cover the last expenses, you may send your contribution to MPESA pay bill number. 8089700. MPESA pay bill number 8089700. And the account number is Catherine Casavulli. And during her stint as the Legends Edition anchor, the late veteran broadcaster Catherine Casavulli also hosted the Legends interview. Tonight, we recap some of those interviews. I am Catherine Casavulli. I have missed you so much. It's been eight years since I was last on any television screen, and it is just a great pleasure to be back. Welcome, Madam Choda. Good evening, viewers. Good evening, Madam. And very happy to be here with you on this auspicious occasion. Thank you so much. Oh gosh, the pleasure is all ours. I have always personally looked out, you know, for, you know, to meet you and unfortunately I didn't have a chance when I met you now and I'm so happy. So please tell us about your exploits on the terrain, rough terrain. I know you also participated in safari rallies in uh, the Himalayas, but first let us start in East Africa. Africa. How did you participate? How did you join? My husband used to go in the safari rallies mm -hmm. all with old cars. Mm -hmm. Then one day it was our wedding anniversary and I got him a car from Amazon Motors. Um, how were you able to balance family life? Because the presidency actually took your life. I, I remember one time from Nakuru, we were not stopping in Nairobi. From here, we drove straight uh, to Mombasa. But with the first stop was at uh, Emali. Mm. I found my wife and my a small child, mm. my small daughter, yes. at um, the roundabout near Nyayo House, where the old provincial, yes, provincial commissioner's office, where it is. On Uhuru Highway. It is Uhuru Highway. I found her study there. You know, annoyed with a childhood here, but then we passed here. And then we had to go to Mombasa. But then when I came back, I had to explain to her that uh, in order to break out of a poverty cycle, something must give. There must be sacrifice. But uh, uh, she understood because by 1981, when I was 32, I built her a beautiful home in Lovington. 
Yes. Wow. And then I told her, these are the fruits of sacrifice. That is so yes, beautiful. Yes, we, we live up to now. <laughs> mm. That is so wonderful. Let's talk about your your childhood, yes. your growing up. Mm -hmm. um, you developed uh, a certain impediment. Yeah. Uh -huh. And of course, you know, it led to uh, you being visibly impaired. Yeah. Can you please tell us about this? Yeah, so at the age of three, yes. um, we were seated at the... Uh, dinner table and uh, this is way back in Vihiga I mean Bunyore <laughs> that's why I keep singing about sweet Bunyore <laughs> so we are having dinner and I stretch out my hand and you know the Ugali Luya is so big you can't miss it huh? so I missed it though and touched the side of the plate and my mother goes what are you becoming blind what she didn't know is that I was actually becoming blind and um, uh, what has happened was that I developed cataracts in both eyes and uh, cataracts nowadays are very easy to treat. And you were having the baby? That's when I had the baby. Wonderful. How yes. did it feel when you came back in 1998? Uh, well, I can say it was a bit challenging mm -hmm. because, uh, you know, there is this what we call uh, baby fat. Yes. So I had to work on that yes. and to get to run with, you know, some extra kgs, mm -hmm. it was a little bit challenging mm -hmm. and it wasn't fun. But uh, it was what was making it more fun is that uh, I, I didn't have anything to regret because I have somebody on the side. So regardless of having those extra kgs, I had somebody who can call me mom and I call and I can cherish as my baby. <laughs> that is wonderful. That is wonderful. Yeah. You deserve all the accolades we can give you. You've been giving people, you know, commendations and things like that. But um, it's time for you also to receive some, you know, <laughs> some ululation and accolades. Thank you. Uh, you were Ambassador Francis Mavaura great diplomat, respected all over the world and also in the European Union. Let's first start at home. You were the first Secretary General to the East African community. Yes. Please walk us through that. Well, I, I was appointed uh, uh, first of all as an executive first executive secretary yes. of the East African community mm -hmm. and it's after the we formulated the treaty yes. after the completion and the adoption of the treaty mm -hmm. that my status changed okay. to one of secretary general of the East African community of acid rain we acid see rain. this quite a lot in uh, developed countries mm -hmm. we are seeing it in some parts of Africa uh, what do you have to say about that? First of all, how it is made in the atmosphere, mm -hmm. okay? You've got a nuclear. A nuclear is that something that is in, in the middle yes. where the water vapor mm -hmm. attaches itself. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, viewers, I am so sorry we have to go. This has been Nguata Francis on Legends Edition. My name is Kathy Kasabuli. I feel so honored to have hosted you on this show and thank you so much for coming. May Catherine's soul rest in eternal peace. Imagine for seven years you are forced to live with a catheter because of 11 botched surgeries of the urethra. This is the condition Samuel Wanje has been forced to adapt to after he was involved in an accident in 2016 when he sustained a pelvic fracture. With the hope to end the gruesome condition he has been subjected to, Samuel is appealing for two million shillings in financial assistance to undergo correctional surgery in India. Our reporter, Ann Buru, with the details. At first glance, Samuel looks healthy until he sits and places his catheter next to him. He tells us about the accident that has left him in this condition. <laughs> So kutoka hapo nilipelekwa makadara uh, nilifanywa upasuaji wa kwanza wa kisafisha tumbo uh, na nilikuwa nimeumia pia mkono uh, so ni, na pia nilipata fracture ya pelvic The medical journey he has been through with 11 surgeries performed on him hasn't been easy and is still hopeful he shall get better 
With no financial backbone, Samuel decided to manage the condition by having to go for catheter changing after two weeks for three years until late last year when he received a call from the Coast General Teaching and Referral Hospital to undergo another corrective surgery which has now left him in a worse condition. Hiloshimo kwa sasa limekuwa kwa miezi fulani imekuwa ina discharge yeah? so asubuhi ili nisitoe harufu ama nisitoe kuvunda fulani nikiwa na watu asubuhi lazima ni kalie maji moto yenye chumvi nifanye sit baada ya asubuhi um, na jioni ndo nikiwa na ndo nilale nikiwa kutoa harufu kwa sababu sasa ya hali ambayo iko so imekuwa ni hali tata sana ninaishi na, na infection ambazo hazishi kwa mwili na sasa kufikia sasa hata madawa mengine ma antibiotics mengine hayafanyi kazi kwa mwili wangu kwa sababu ya zimekuwa chronic kwa mwili na nimetumia hizo antibiotics kwa muda mrefu zaidi ya miaka mitano in an unexpected twist of events, the accident compensation was paid in a tune of 5.5 million shillings, which Samuel was optimistic will assist him in paying for his medical trip to India, which hasn't been the case. Nilifanya application kwa sababu tulikuwa tumefanya mpango huu na wakili wakati wakili tulikuwa tukiwasiliana vizuri. Hata alijua program ya kwenda India na alikuwa ameniahidi kunipa pesa baada kutuma hizo 500 akakuwa ameni akanipigia simu akaniambia ameniingiza 1.7 kwa account ambapo sasa tukichanganya hizo tumeona sasa safari ya kwenda India imekamilika kwa sababu tuko na hizi fedha ambazo zinaweza kutupeleka so pesa hizo hakuniingizia ilikuwa ni kuniada kadri ni saizi tunafanya mahojiano haya visa yangu ni expire Samuel is now appealing to well wishes to assist him in raising 2 million shillings to undergo surgery in India as soon as possible as his health has continued to deteriorate. Kwa sababu mimi sijiwezi niko tu kwa nyumba. Um um imelazimu mke wangu sasa yeye ndo atafanye kibarua, afanye vibarua akinitunza. Lakini amenivumilia na amenitegemeza kipindi hicho chote yeye anashughulikia nyumba kila kitu kwa nyumba mimi sina uwezo wote na hali imekuwa hivi na kwa sababu sasa hali yangu afya inazidi kuzoroteka ni naomba wakeni wenzangu kila ambacho mtanaweza kumsaidia nacho mnisaidie niweze kukimbia matibabu you can help Samuel Wanje seek medical attention in India by sending your financial assistance to KCB Bank Changamwe branch account number one two nine one four four eight six three two. You can also send Mpesa through his mobile number zero seven two seven eight zero five seven five zero. From Mombasa County, I am Anboru. Wachua mamili leo na loto moto. Kucheza ni rahisi zaidi. Kwenye Mpesa, chagua lipa na Mpesa. Paybill number, weka 75-70-70. Account number, andika neno loto. Kisha, weka star. Alafu nambari yako ya simu. Kwenye amount, weka kiwango chochote cha pesa. Kuanzia shilingi hamsini, hadi shilingi elfu mbili. Lipa na usubiri draw. Cheza kwa kuwajibika. Mchezo huu ni wazi kwa watu walio na umri wa miaka kumi na minane na zaidi. For people to understand that even as this year has started i want for them not to you know have that too much excitement to announce that they are about to start this new job you need to be realistic yeah in how you're going to adapt that should actually be something that you define and you set that goal that suits you to make sure that half of your plate contains you know vegetables and leafy greens and anything that is plant-based But as if how's your son? <laughs> Need look at my shop, man. Is he dead? You bet more than you. No, kill two apples. More than you, but get the money. You don't need to buy a house. You money. for three days, sasa. You need to tell the Lord you're juicy.
tutatumia fake and break. Two teams, stealth incursion, in and out in under 20 minutes. Okay, keep going. Kenyans have been urged to invest in planting tree seedlings as a business venture which will in turn create employment for our youths by investing in nurseries where they can plant trees to sell. This and more stories in our County News Roundup. During a tree planting exercise in Kiambu County, the youth were urged to take advantage of the ongoing national tree planting driver to make their own tree nurseries and sell seedlings to private entities and the government. So, Vijana and Ingawa Imiza wa Ungane Pamoja were form cooperatives. Ambazo wata form uh, uh, tree uh, seed wataweza kupanga waweze wa kutengeneza seedlings na waweze kuuzia wananchi na waweze pia kujikimu kimaisha wapata incomes kutoka kwa hizo uh, nurseries ambazo wataweza kutengeneza Still in Kiambu County persons with disabilities are calling on the government to exempt taxes charged on all assistive devices This as Ngecha Tigoni Ward MCA Patrick Ngaruya disclosed that Kiambu County government has launched a database for people with a disability across 60 wards in the county which will help them set aside adequate finances as they await for money disbursement from the treasury. We have a database of what we have done in the disability. Here moving forward, we have to have a key, to have a idea, to have a chakula, to have a madawa, to have a boka mahai. We have to have a key, to have a key, to have a key, to have a key, to Ma, wale ambao wanastahili courses pia wale ambao wanahitaji kadi za watu ambao ni waremavu na pia itatusaidia wakati tunapanga kazi kama county kama national government tutakuwa tuna percentage fulani ya watu ambao wako na ulemavu in Kisi, South Mugirango constituency seeks to raise millions of shillings for bursaries this year to implement its education for an enlightened community motto the target is over 120 million shillings from national government constituency development fund ministry of education donors and well wishes to facilitate the education of 7500 underprivileged students the best thing you can do is to give uh, your people education what wakio are civilized in education hautakuwa sida kwa community na kwa hivyo sisi tume target kupatia kutumia milioni ya msini za CDF watu wangu wote wasome elsewhere busia county cc for lands and urban planning peter odima has given traders and business people whose premises are on road reserves an ultimatum to vacate before january 23rd this year before scheduled demolition commences nataka hata wananchi wa busia nao pia na wafanye biashara wajivunie kukaa kwa tauni ambayo iko iko safi sasa mkomiti on removal of illegal kiosks and the organization of uh, Busia town. In Kisumu, the government has challenged youths to take advantage of the Youth Enterprise Development Fund and start income generating activities. The Youth Enterprise Development Fund director, Faith Lukosi, said the fund has rolled out new products targeting the youth. I'm urging young people, please take this opportunity that we are offering through Youth Fund and create a job for yourself and also you will be able to even create a job for other people within your community. Finally, Loda Street children have gotten shelter and education from the Loda Rescue Center. Dan Kanomondi, a pastor and founder of Loda Rescue Shelter, said the purpose of the rescue is to rehabilitate, reintegrate and re-socialize street children. Turkana residents have been raising alarm over rising populations of street children, families and asked Pastor Duncan to return back the children to school. We believe they have also potential 
to change in their lives. Some of them, is not their wish to see them the way they are. Some of them are going through very painful issues they can't even explain to anybody. My heart and my prayer is to see these children going to school, to see these children have a place for them to be taken care of. We are very glad that you're still tuned in because there is more and we have Topi Lambila coming to you with Sports News. Topi, what do you have in sports? The year may have just begun. Oh yeah, the year has just begun and first of all, it's a uh, happy new year to you. I, saw, I last saw you <laughs> last year. <laughs> yeah, I remember over Christmas. Yes. Yeah, it's always a pleasure to be back with you here, Edmund. Asante. And we hope that this year is great. We've got a lot of stories on the local scene and just one on the international scene from sports. I'm Topi Lambila and this is the sports. Relegation threatened Bandari FC are focused on collecting maximum points from Tusker FC when they host their lead leaders at the Baraki Sports Stadium in one of the nine Kenyan Premier League matches on card tomorrow. Bandari are 12th on the table, having picked just five points from the six matches they have played so far this season. Giants Bandari FC have had the worst start to a Premier League season winning just one of the six matches they've played so far. Bandari have lost three matches and drawn two and face an uphill task in their search for a second win of the season tomorrow when they host leaders Tasca FC in Baraki. Tasca are leading the table on maximum points having won all their opening six matches conceding just four goals and scoring 12 in the process. The game is the highlight of tomorrow match day which features all the other teams we have now to work uh, as a team together now because last season we did start well as like this season but this season we have catch up I think the preseason also helped us uh, at least uh, in maintaining this shape so it's the effect of the of the preseason that is at least uh, making us perform well Work too hard, a lapu piano, no attacking clock, many minutes, see you about sixty up on attacking work hard, Niklock around to go eighty or seventy, a lapu piano, not a get sana cupiana six mingi, and pia kufunga. Second place Tanzoia Sugar will also have a difficult assignment against Kakamega Homeboys as Gormaya head to Thika Municipal Stadium to play Poster Rangers. Kario Bangi Sharks will play Police. Mathare United face Sofa Paka. Ulinzi Stars will clash with Wazito. AFC Leopards will host Bitco United. Vihiga Bullets face City Stars. While Talanta and KCB meet at the Kasarani Annex. Kahawa Wendani All Stars and the Sili South United booked their place in the quarterfinals of the ongoing Kotbiro Soccer Tournament after winning their respective round of 16 matches played on Saturday at the Umeme Grounds, Ziwani, Nairobi. Ah. Kaha and Danny Allstars registered a narrow 2-1 win against Zimmerman Allstars to book their place in the quarterfinals of this year's Coast Bureau tournament in a closely fought encounter. Edwin Maina gave Kaha the lead in the 47th minute before Harry Omsisi doubled the advantage with 13 minutes to go. Zimmerman pulled one back in the 82nd minute through Douglas Nyaosi. It's teamwork and uh, a lot of belief in each other. We have uh, worked together as a technical team. As the playing unit, we have come together and uh, we we, even before the tournament started, we said we are going to use our players are there and we are going to believe in each and every one of us. And um, that has worked and uh, a lot of training, of course, together and a lot of support from um, everybody around the team. The level we are in now, the round of 16, is a level we've always come to every time we've played this tournament. But I think um, this time is we think of going uh, going further. We think of probably a semi-final, even a final. It's it's a good way. We have young boys; they're still learning, but they have the fight. They have the heart. I believe our side is one of the youngest teams around, and our main aim is to develop the players. And we thought this is a good platform for them to showcase their talent, and hopefully. Scouts will at least see one or two players from our side. It has been a good, good, good game here. 
and good exposure. For me, I've I've managed to score four goals. I think apparently I'm the top scorer. In an early encounter, Isli South United emerged with a 2 0 victory over Isinia United from Kajado County. Henrich Kuke and Mark Wekesa were on the mark for Isli, who set up a quarter final date with Kahao and Danny Olsters. The tournament, which attracted a total of 50 teams this season, is expected to enter the quarter final stage next week, even as organizers pleaded for financial support from well wishes. Uh, about the prize money, we've not gotten a sponsor. And- in that uh, category, uh, but Amos Mago, I uh, promised to uh, to push us up to where we we'll, 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 if we can get a sponsor. I think uh, that's where he has pushed us. He has not given us all the funds, so we still need some support uh, for this edition. Yeah. The annual off-season soccer tournament seeks to offer a platform to upcoming footballers to showcase their talent. Bernard Okumu, Legends Edition. <laughs> Now, football stakeholders in the country, led by former Harambe star striker Denis Oliech, want Football Kenya Federation, FKF, to hold elections as soon as possible. FKF has not been able to hold national elections after it was disbanded by former sports cabinet secretary Amina Mohamed and a caretaker committee formed to run football in the country. Consequently, the World Soccer Governing Body, FIFA, banned Kenya indefinitely from international soccer, citing government interference in the running of soccer in the country. The ban was lifted the end of last year. The football stakeholders now want elections to be held soon, with former players incorporated in the running of the sport in the country. World over, uh, federations, some are the countries, the governments are using ex players to develop soccer. I mean, it's, it, it is no special formula. I mean, it's just a structured uh, nini, uh, environment where if you retire, you are absorbed somewhere. <laughs> Eh, manake uongoza uliyoku kwa sasa ni uongoza ambao tumeza kuona au uja kusaidia kwa hivyo tunatubiri tuna, tuna pia tuone kama tuweza pata fursa nyingine sasa sisi wote kama wadao tuweza kuona waziri tuweza kumwelezea mambo yale tukonayo yale ambayo yaneza kumsaidia yeye kuweza kurudisha eh, hali ya kandanda katika ambayo eh, inatakikana now, schools and colleges sporting activities are set to resume fully this year after being suspended for two years due to the COVID-19 pandemic. According to a circular release by the Principal Secretary State of the Department of Basic Education, Mr. Belio Sang, Hill School and Moi Girls Eldoret will host the Tab 1 Kenya Secondary School Sports Association Games between the 22nd and the 30th of April. Disciplines to compete in the term one include athletics, basketball, hockey, handball, and swimming. The term two national games will be held at the Kakamega High School between the 5th and 14th of August this year. The games will culminate in the Federation of East Africa Schools Sports Association championships to be held in Bujumbura, Burundi between the 15th and the 30th of August this year. World Mountain and Trail began, be, be running champion Patrick Kipngeno and silver medalist Philemon Kiriago are among the top athletes who have confirmed their participation in the second edition of the Nandi Bandingetun Memorial Mountain Run set to be held tomorrow. Last year, Kipngeno won six gold level races during the mountain running World Cup circuit with Kiriago finishing second in the series. Kiriago has appealed to Athletics Kenya to give mountain running the same attention as the other events. The race will start at AIC Lelgotet Junction along Maraba Road and finish at Kimatkei Primary School. The race will feature 12 kilometers race for senior men and women, 6 kilometer junior men and 4 kilometer junior women and 2 kilometers for the masters. Winners of the 12 kilometer race in both the men and women's categories 
will receive 100,000 shillings. There will be other tokens which include hyphus, sheep and goat. Sports Cabinet Secretary Ababu Namwamba is expected to grace the event alongside Nandi Governor Stephen Sang. Malaysia Mema Football Academy, sitting second on the Kiambu Sub-County League, is eyeing promotion to the Kenyan Premier League by the year 2028. The football club started a year ago from the Malaysia Mama Mema Foundation, is second on the equal points of 16 points with leaders Emirates FC after playing seven games each this season. Malaysia Mema Academy will play Kangoya Ravens tomorrow hoping to collect maximum points to move above leaders Emirates in the Kiambu Sub-County League. The two sides are top of the table on 16 points each from seven matches but Emirates have a better goal aggregate. Malaysia Mema is a football club developed from the Malaysia Mema Foundation that was started over 10 years ago to nurture and develop talents with the aim of sending the best players to join international clubs abroad. <laughs> mtoto wetu kabla hajafika 9 years tuko na uwezo wa kuanza kumtafutia kama ni international tournaments kuna kama ni hizi local tournaments kuna national tournaments kuna continental tournaments hapa East Africa Kenya Uganda Tanzania and then like some of the guys we have here at, at 17 wanafaa kuanza kuwa ameanza kuonja international kama trials. The foundation also supports talented children in other sporting disciplines including swimming and basketball from Nairobi Kisumu and Mombasa. Our main aim ya kuanza ya kuanza mambo ya foundation kwanza ni sababu tuliona kwa ile ujuzi tuko nayo kuna zile talents ziko hapa hapa mtaani ambazo zinakosa uwezo wa ku wanakosa kusaidiwa na hizo talents zao. So tukaanza mambo ya, ya, ya foundation kusaidia watoto kando na football kuna swimming kuna basketball kuna na mambo ya kuwapatia chakula na kusomesha wengine pia wale wanalemewa na masomo eh. it has the aim of tapping talents from the age of 5 years despite lacking financial support tuna work na coaches wale ambao kwa well trained sababu they come and give back to community through sports uh, more importantly ni kutouch lives kupatia watoto wa mtaa nafasi ya kufeel wako part ya mtaa your hope na love and then from there tuna progress to cut up those talents and we don't deny mtoto yote kuwa kwa program hata kama ajui ball kuna one way or the other through your mambo ya ball inafanya yo mtoto a feel part of the community they are calling on the government through the ministry of sports to support the academies by constructing or setting aside sporting facilities strictly for junior players kwa cs mimi ningependa ningependa ama ningemsihi ile system ilikuwa zamani ya uh, talanta mashinani arudi kwa hiyo aweze kusaidia zile talanta ziko hapa sababu tunaona so many academies are coming up but then kuna mweleko inakosekana our body fkf inafanya shughuli lakini kuna mahali bado ijafika sababu ya uwezo so cs aki intervene mambo inaweza kuwa poa sana wainwe football mashinani kabisa kile imetusaidia kuwa namba mbili kwa hii ligi ni teamwork na na kusaidiana tukiwa huko nje juu wengi wetu tunatoka wanatoka pamoja ku kwa huko kuja kucheza kutrain huku kasarini e, tunabebana ka team kila siku kuja training from tuesday to friday saturday watu wanapumzika sunday tuko tuko match so kile naweza sema imetusaidia sana ni team work Ndumberi Rising is third in the sub-county league while Gatina and Kirigiti Youth sit bottom of the 12th team table. On the international scene, English striker Harry Kane scored the only goal as Tottenham Hotspur beat Portsmouth to book a place in the fourth round of the FA Cup. In another match, Southampton beat Crystal Palace to go to one at the Sellers Park Stadium. Corner, wasn't a bad effort. Well, there's Emerson Royale, no! Somehow, no! You got there, you expected the net to ripple. It was a great delivery. Oh, Kane, it's opened up! Oh, glorious goal! The breakthrough comes in classic Harry Kane style. And uh, eight points clear of the relegation line last season. Anderson into Zaha's feet, onto Odson Edouard, this is Edouard! And Palace!
Spire first after 14 first half minutes. Rather further out. Sent in high with promise. Oh, and all the way in. Ward Prowse. Southampton's go to guy for free kicks. Has it with the save. Whiter. Armstrong here has picked the goalkeeper's pocket. Armstrong with a gift. Vicente Guaita and certain all afternoon has paid a heavy. Well, that's all we had for you from the sports uh, section, and uh, it's been a good night. Hope that you know you keep with KBC. Now, Edmund, um, yes. it's been quite a good bulletin, and it's really good getting back on the screens with you. Of course, uh, it was quite a heavy bulletin. Of course, with that memorial of uh, uh, Catherine and the fundraiser, it was really good to remember our colleague. And I hope that you know we are very thankful that you know all Kenyans have come out in support. Indeed, we appreciate the uh, support from Kenyans and uh, may our sister rest in eternal peace, that is her soul. And um, this being the very first Saturday of the month of January, very first Saturday in 2023 and very first edition, that is Legends Edition, it's time now to say goodbye. Uh, thank you. Yeah, of course, time to say goodbye. I'm Topi Liambila. And I'm Edmund Mudibo. Our sign language interpreter has been Lucy Maura. Goodbye. Wachua mamili leo na Loto Moto. Chezo kianzia na shilingi hamsini na ushinde milioni mbili kila siku. Kucheza ni rahisi zaidi. Kwenye Mpesa, chakua lipa na Mpesa. Pay bill number, weka 75 -70 -70. Account number, andika neno Loto. Kisha, weka star. Alafu nambari yako ya simu. Kwenye amount, weka kiwango chochote cha pesa. Kuanzia shilingi hamsini, hadi shilingi elfu mbili. Lipa na usubiri draw. Makinika papa hapa ili utimize ndoto zako na loto moto. Cheza kwa kuwajibika. Mchezo huu ni wazi kwa watu walio na umri wa miaka kumi na minane na zaidi. Ujumbe huu umedhilishwa na BCLB. Cheza loto moto. Shinda pesa moto moto. Jumapili hii kwenye runinga ya KBC ungana naye askofu Michael Wanderi wa kanisa la Christian Foundation Fellowship Kiambu kuanzia saa moja hadi saa mbili asubuhi Ningataka nikwambie our Jehovah God because the Bible says he is the same yesterday today and forevermore he is able to take you to a place of abundance he is able to take you to Rehobothi in the name of Jesus Christ Kipindi ni neno la neema Ukiletewa nae askofu Michael Wanderi wa kanisa la Christian Foundation Fellowship Kiambu usikose <muchas>